or as a third party claim against uh, this Bernard Holcomb or um, Sunset Equipment. But for purposes of today's motion, um, they haven't actually asserted any counterclaims against plaintiff. I, their, their, their defense in general is sort of confusing as well, where at times they said it was not signed or forged, and at times they said that it was uh, induced by fraud. So, I mean, as that goes to, uh, you know, certainly there'll be some discovery onto the underlying claims. But, you know, again, that's as a defense to plaintiff's claim, not as an affirmative counterclaim, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Beer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, opposing <laughs> counsel doesn't quite capture the full gist of, of the counterclaim. Um, West Park Baptist had a meeting with Mr. Holcomb where he held himself out to be a dealer of cannons. And in that meeting, um, he represented that, that the agreement um, that uh, Cannon has now sued under um, uh, was one for, for a maintenance agreement of a different copier leased by a completely different entity. Um, but, uh, in fact, Ken is now claiming that this agreement is for the lease of a much larger, larger machine, much larger, larger than this church office would ever have wanted, much larger than they ever asked for, and most importantly, a different machine than they ever for one second possessed or received. Um, and, so there are two problems with the very premise of plaintiff's motion. Number one, it's premised on, on the terms of this alleged agreement, which my client denies receiving, denies agreeing to, denies signing. Um, now, of course, we're allowed to make pleadings in the alternative, and we have pled in the alternative that if it was signed, it was done under fraud. But that doesn't change the fact that the, that the factual allegation of our counterplan is that it was never signed. It was never agreed to. So, so the agreement that we're disputing cannot serve as the basis of their dismissal motion at the pleading stage. Um, but even if the agreement had been signed, Canada admits to being the purchaser of the leased equipment, equipment that was never delivered. And so the idea that Canada could accept $15,000 worth of payments and put it into its own pocket and deliver absolutely nothing in return and that that wouldn't be unjust enrichment, um, it certainly flies in the face of the equities of unjust enrichment and, and again, is inappropriate at the pleading stage. Uh, if, if the well uh allegations of our complaint are borne out to be true, that the church paid, paid $15,000 for a copier it, was, it never received under, uh, under, because it was duped into doing so under false pretenses, Clearly, a claim for unjust enrichment would lie. Um, and and the, other part, uh, the other problem with their argument is that they ignore that we allege that uh, Mr. Holcomb was their agent. And certainly, there are facts that would suggest that there's apparent authority here. If, if he marches in with an agreement uh, of canons and can bind canon to that agreement, certainly there's apparent authority there. Um, and, and the canon is now held to his representation. And that would therefore give rise to other claims, such as uh, uh, the, um, uh, excuse me, the uh, good faith and fair dealing claim that we brought, such as a CFA claim, and if Florida were to apply, then, then such as the, the claim uh, under Florida law as well. Ms. Uh, Damanovich, do you have anything uh, you want to add to that? And then I have some questions. Um, sure, Your Honor. I, I guess part of what I would argue here is, I mean, at the very least, they're saying that there's some question of who Mr. Holcomb worked for, but they haven't brought him in. They haven't attempted to bring the dealer in. They mm -hmm. haven't said that he said he was an agent of Canon Financial. I think the, the wording they used was that he was a dealer of Canon equipment, which he is, but that's a very different uh, you know, argument from apparent authority or agency. And I haven't heard any arguments stated that would support even an apparent authority argument. Um, and again, it goes back to the fact that none of the representations or the conduct alleged was made by plaintiff. I mean, again, Plan Financial is a finance company located in New Jersey. The transaction that the defendant's talking about all took place in Florida. There hasn't been any allegation on, you know, as, as far as conduct by plaintiff. So again, I realize the defendant says there's discovery on this issue, but then why aren't they bringing in any of the parties that they're asserting these claims against. Let me say this, um, counsel, it appears that the defendant is uh, indicating that Canon Financial Services is affiliated with um, the companies that they dealt with um, and that it's a separate entity. 
Um, it appears that West Park Baptist, um, if they want to assert their, those claims, it's not a counterclaim. The Canon Financial Services simply provides the funding. And uh, I think it's a different entity that provides the equipment and all of the um, maintenance of it. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And the defendant would, would be working with someone locally in Florida where they receive the equipment and they may have a service agreement. I'm not sure because Canon Financial stays out of that. But I mean, again, Canon Financial doesn't even have the ability to provide the equipment or service locally because they're not located nearby. So again, Sunset Equipment is the actual dealer that, that the defendant worked with in this case. Yeah, I think, Mr. Beer, you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to bring them into this action? Or do you want to pursue them in Florida where your client is? Um, this wouldn't preclude you. This is simply um, an action on this finance agreement. Um, however, you may have a defense. You're saying you didn't even sign this agreement. That may be a defense. Um, but as to the other issues, um, I'm not sure that you're in the right place. Doesn't the UCC um, affect this council? Isn't this like, uh, isn't there a UCC provision on this? There is, Your Honor. It's uh, Article 2A of the UCC for equipment lease agreements with the fair market value purchase option. Okay. So, and that, I think, provides the fact that it's... Um, I think if you analyze it that way, um, that precludes this kind of action against uh, Canon Financial Services. You may want you may want to pursue uh, your claims against your um, the provider of the equipment, the person that had you sign it. Um, I would suggest a if you want to bring him in on a third party complaint. Um, that may be the appropriate way of dealing with that, but it's... Your Honor. Yeah, go ahead. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of issues there. First of all, uh, without conceding anything, I'm not sure there would be jurisdiction in New Jersey over that individual because they don't have any connection to New Jersey as far as we're aware. Um, the basis of this action being in New Jersey is a choice of law provision in the disputed agreement. Now, we didn't move to dismiss on that basis because we concede there would be a fact question as to whether the agreement is applicable, in which case... There would be a right. fact question without jurisdiction lies. Um, so a third-party complaint here may be problematic for that reason. But it doesn't change the fact that, that it's inconsistent to say that something would be a defense but, would there, but then would not be the basis of a counterclaim where Canon has received over $15,000. If the agreement's not enforced, they don't get to keep that money. That, so the unjust enrichment claim clearly goes forward um, if that defense is successful. I have, I don't, I'm not so sure because they're separate and apart from um, the person that provided it. Um, they paid, I, my, my guess is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that Canon Financial Services paid for the equipment and took back like this paper to finance it. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. I mean, the plaintiff, and I don't think defendants raised otherwise, that Canon Financial did pay the vendor for the equipment that's listed in this lease for the amounts set forth in this lease. So the whether there was an issue with the discussions between the defendant and the dealer about equipment they believed they were getting, the equipment listed on this contract was sent to plaintiff. They paid the dealer for it, and then some equipment was, was delivered to, to the defendant. And I guess, Your Honor, just really quickly to address the issue, the issue of jurisdiction is the vendor in Florida did contract with plaintiff and New Jersey company, you know, in these cases, the vendor is very frequent, frequently brought in. I've never seen a case of the, the third party defendant not having not, you know, not being in the case because of jurisdiction. So I mean, to that to that end, it's fairly common in these cases, in fact, and, you know, the vendor really doesn't have a jurisdictional argument where they've chosen to contract with a you know, New Jersey based finance company like Canon. Um, but Your Honor, we are not aware of these, these relationships, because we haven't taken discovery on them yet. And the fact that Mr. Holcomb could have Cannon's contract, could walk into an office and say, and this is what they're alleging. He, he walks into office and says, oh, you sign here, and, and, and we're going to do this and the other thing. Clearly, there's an issue of apparent authority there 
And, and I can tell you, my client will will testify that he, that to him there was no difference between Mr. Holcomb and Cannon. And so um, they may win the day uh, after discovery or at, or to a, fa- a finder of fact, but they they, they can at the pleading stage say, trust me, he wasn't our agent, and uh, and so your counterclaim has to go has to has to no, uh, be dismissed. I, I, I understand that, counsel. I understand what you're saying. Um, I I get it because I see it a lot in these kind of uh, equipment lease agreements um, and financial agreements. And that's how I come up with this and how um, how I know some of this. It's not like I'm I just have heard it before. But let me say this. I. um I have um, on a third party complaint on a motion to dismiss by the third party defendant. Um, I've kept them in in the past. Um, that being said, I think that there would have to be a remedy um, involved, but you're not, you don't have everybody here. Canon Financial Services is paid for the equipment, they paid for the equipment, they're out of pocket. And then they took that, they, it's like, um, hypothetically, you buy a house and you have a mortgage on it um, and you have a, you have a dispute with the seller over some kind of quality or something. Um, The mortgage the mor- the mortgage uh, holder isn't responsible for that. It's uh, that's just oversimplifying it. And um, I get what you're saying. It's under I. You make I I understand where you're coming from, and I understand your client's uh, concerns. Um, but um, quite frankly. Uh, there are ways to uh, hold these third-party defendants in. If not, there's remedies. Um, there are remedies. Uh, you could, uh, if you want to pursue them in Florida, cause, because it's easier for you um, or your client, um, then that can be done. Um, there are ways of dealing with this. Um, but quite frankly, if you look at the UCC, uh, the only the only uh, concern I have, though, is if your client says, I did not sign that document, that's a problem for Canon Financial Services. So um, that being said, that- I, I understand that. But um, so that's a defense. But I don't know that you have a counterclaim. I think that. Um, I, I'm inclined to allow you to pursue your defenses, but the counterclaim is I don't th- it's not appropriate. However, I'll allow you to file a third party complaint against the people that were um, that your clients dealt with. And I think that should resolve it if there's a jurisdictional issue, uh, quite frankly, if there is a jurisdictional issue uh, that will be dealt with down the road, but it doesn't stop you. If, if for some reason a New Jersey court says, no, I don't have jurisdiction over that. Um, although I, I can tell you, I made a different ruling in the past. Um, then it would be, this is without prejudice to pursuing whatever claims they have in Florida. Um, you know, that's... Your Honor, can I just briefly address the interplay of the UCC and the unjust enrichment claim? Right. Go um, ahead. Uh, pl- plaintiff has not indicated any reason under Article 2A of the UCC that an unjust enrichment claim would not lie if, as Your Honor just suggested, uh, it were to be found that, that the finance agreement um, is, not, uh, is not enforceable. And so if a jury were to, were to find that my client did not sign and agree to this agreement, a jury could certainly also find that it would be unjust to allow Canon to retain the benefit for payment for something that my client never agreed to and never received. That would be textbook unjust enrichment, and the UCC would not foreclose it. 
Well, I'm not sure about that. I nobody nobody briefed that to me. The problem I have is this. Um, quite frankly, then Canon Financial Services would then have a claim, likewise, against the person that did that. I mean, um, for the value of the copier, correct? But that's not that's between them and their well, vendor. Well, but if if there's a judgment against them, I don't I don't know that nobody nobody really briefed that issue as to how that is. Nobody brought that up. You're saying, I mean, you brought it up, but it, not in the context of understanding the Canon Financial Services um, is really not the provider of the equipment. I think that's where that's where you and your client are misled. I don't I, I mean, I can understand why you would argue that right now. I can understand why you filed your answer and counterclaim. Um, but I think that um, I think that it's probably more appropriate for you to file a third party complaint against the provider. Um, but that being said, I don't know. Um, I don't know if um, I don't know about the interplay of the unjust enrichment. It just may be people have to go. It may be um, if they're not aware of it, I don't know if um, it's considered unjust enrichment if somebody um, perpetrated that upon your client and upon Canon Financial Services. That person uh, probably indicated that um, there we are, you know, here's a legit um, lien or this is a legit financial um, situation. Uh, this is a, you know, legitimate financial piece of paper that can be relied upon, um, then, you know, uh, there's, there's a problem and Canon Financial Services also may have a claim against them if they're out the money. So honestly, I do, I do not, um, I don't know, um, Ms. Um, counsel for Plaintiff. What do you say about the unjust enrichment in the UCC? Well, Your Honor, I would say, I mean, plaintiff can't be unjustly enriched. Where, I mean, again, there there hasn't been any allegation that they didn't pay for this equipment. Canon, like the defendant, perhaps under their allegations, is also out a lot of money here because they paid for equipment that they thought they were getting sixty months of payment on. So, there hasn't been any allegation that they didn't pay this money to the vendor. So, again, I mean. Even if there was some issue with the equipment not being delivered, plaintiff is not the party that's benefiting because they are also, you know, I'm not sure what their actual loss here is here. I mean, they're certainly entitled to accelerate the remaining balance. Um, Your Honor, one thing I would suggest, and I don't know how counsel for defendant feels, is that perhaps if there's concerns, I believe the counterclaim as pled currently doesn't state any of these claims, which is why we're advocating for dismissal. But I would suggest that maybe dismissal without prejudice at this stage where if some discovery comes up that suggests otherwise, where a defendant could redraft their counterclaim to indicate facts that, that would point to a counterclaim against the plaintiff, they could do so. Um, you know, I don't, again, I don't know if that would sort of be a happy medium that sort of leaves the option out there, but I, you know, we reiterate that the counterclaim as it currently stands does not see any affirmative claims against the plaintiff, just defenses that they could allege right. there'll be discovery on. Right. That's that's your honor. How much true, Mr. Beer? You're not alleging any. It is. It appears that your allegations affect somebody else. Um, and your honor, I think I think counsel has it backwards. I, I think counsel is trying to take her claim against Mr. Holcomb and put the burden on my client to 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 prove it for her. And and if if it is the case, let's just say that. Um, Canon paid for this machine under the understanding that Mr. Holcomb would deliver it to West Park Baptist, and he did not. And so as a result, West, West Park Baptist never made a single payment. Where would Canon's relief lie? It would rely with Mr. Holcomb. The fact that we mistakenly made some payments shouldn't shift the burden from Canon to go pursue the wrongdoer against that it has. 
um, to make it to be to shift the burden over to to the church who who mistakenly made some of the payments before it realized what had happened. They have their own independent cause of action against Mr. Holcomb, but they don't get to retain the mistakenly paid money in the meantime. Well, they don't know that. You're the one making the allegations that they didn't sign it. You're the one yeah. that's asserting Which that. Be- they, don't, they don't know that your client didn't sign it. Your client is saying that. Um, and, and, and we should be given the opportunity to prove it. Sure. I think you need to, the, I, I think it's, the counterclaim that you're making is against somebody other than Canon Financial Services. I think that. That's not who we paid the money to, Your Honor. No, you're, they paid for the equipment and then, and your client, it's like the mortgage company. They're like the mortgage company. Except that, except they're like a mortgage company who actually owns title to the to the property, which they wouldn't normally, and who and and for a, a buyer who never actually gets the house, that's a very different circumstance in here. Well, I I'm just all right. We can go round and round. This is what I'm going to say. I am going to dismiss the counterclaim without prejudice. Um, and I will allow you to file a third party complaint if you so desire. Um, we can leave it that way. If you don't want to pursue the third party complaint, that's up to you. But um, it's um, then you'll have to prove that Canon Financial Services really was the person that did this. And if you don't, then you're I don't I don't know how you want to deal with it. I don't want to tell you how to practice law, but um, I think that I will grant the motion without prejudice, um, discovery to proceed, um, and I will allow a third party complaint to be filed. Uh, I will allow it, counsel. I'm not requiring you to do it. If you, if you choose not to do it, then that's up to you. But I will allow it to be filed within 45 days. Is that reasonable, counsel? 45 yes, days. I don't know where what everybody's circumstances are with all this craziness. Um, but is that a reasonable amount of time? I, I think it is, Your Honor. And if not, you know, we would certainly apprise the court of any any uh, extenuating circumstances. Okay, we'll do the best. You know, we'll be considerate of that. Um, a letter. Probably will suffice if you need more time to at Thank least you. draft the complaint. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Um, that's the um, that's the circumstance. Um, and I'm, I'll just repeat myself. I won't repeat myself. I've said everything how I perceive this. But um, I think that's the resolution. And we'll get all the parties in. Um, and find out what what's happened. Um, and then that should hopefully resolve matters, counsel. Um, especially if it turns out that they didn't sign it. I mean, um, there's a big problem there if they didn't. So, um, anyway, that's how I'll leave it. And that's how I resolve this motion. So you have some time to go. You're a track two, and um, your DED is in until November 16th. So I think you have time to get stuff done. Hopefully, um, if you don't, then you you can certainly uh, request time from the court. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. You too.